increasingly, people have just basically forgotten why it is that we love analog synthesizers. I think people have a lot of ideas about what constitutes the joy of analog sound. And I think basically we've gotten a bit off track, especially because all of the modern, a lot, well, a lot of the modern analog synthesizers are so pure. And the reason why they're so pure is because people are using them to make a certain type of music and they're using them with sequencers and DAWs and they need a certain level of stability in order to do that. And uh, so companies are making analog synthesizers that are really, in, in addition to being analog and powerful, they're making analog synthesizers that are incredibly stable and uh, really pure which is kind of counterproductive because the joy of analog comes from all of the failures that you might actually seek to avoid in a synthesizer. And I think that's why we've kind of lost the ability to make really awesome analog sound. And there's also the mistakes that people make uh, when they're, what they think the joy of analog sounds are, which is the first thing I'm gonna show. But in general, I wanted to make this series to, to hit on a number of factors that make synthesizers sound analog in the way that is desirable. Instead of just being a great sounding synth, a synth that is both great sounding and also analog sounding. So the first thing we should probably talk about is the issue that has arisen over you know all of these many years where people have a misconception about what characterizes analog sound. And a lot of the things that people think characterize analog sound are things that are easily achievable by any synthesizer, digital or otherwise. And so like the first one that we run into a lot is the simple beating that, uh, that occurs between two oscillators. So like we have an oscillator, here's a sawtooth. We now have two of them. Is this, what's the output level on this guy? Okay, we now have two oscillators. Of course, these are digital oscillators, so they are not going to beat against each other because they're both perfect. They both are hitting that same frequency all the time. So if we go into one of them and start dealing with the pitch, let's see, where is it? immediately we can create the sort of phasing that occurs between two oscillators that aren't completely in tune. Which is a lot prettier than, which is kind of hideous and unnatural. And this is why I keep telling people, uh, like on a Juno 106, the minute you hit the mono button, you're not getting something cool, you're getting this a bunch of oscillators stacked on top of each other, perfectly in tune, just making this big sort of hollow weird noise like this. But, uh, so if you can make oscillators out of tune with each other, sounds great. And I think people mistake a lot of things that sound great for analog, which is understandable. This is not analog. This is not characteristic of analog because I'm doing this with some digital sawtooths right now. So, I mean, this isn't analog sounding. This isn't fat sounding. This is just good sounding because whenever you have two things that are slightly out of tune, it creates a natural chorusing. <laughs> we have a knob for that. So used to doing this digitally, I don't think about it. The other thing that people often think is a, a really analog sound is uh, like high resonance. So if we have some sound where, keep in mind this is an analog filter. So it's gonna sound, it sounds great. Also, these digital oscillators sound great even without any analog tricks. More so than a lot of synthesizers, it just has a natural character to the, the way that these produce waveforms, especially the sawtooth, 
that sounds good. So this immediately sounds kind of analog, even though it's a digital oscillator going into this analog filter. But anyway, people tend to think that Okay, now it sounds more digital. Okay, the minute you start adding resonance, people think that's analogy. <laughs> Uh, and it's not. And they also think that that's fatness. It's also not. This has a pretty aggressive resonance, too. I guess uh, let's try it through this other filter. We'll put it in low pass to start out. state vari variable filters even though they're 12 decibels per octave to me they end up sounding more vintage because so many of the vintage synths that we really enjoyed had 12 decibel per octave early on and as a result we kind of has an association although obviously Moog synthesizers with the 24 decibel per octave which was a very defining element plays a role in our perception of great sounding analog but there's just something about the raspy sort of 12 decibel per octave sound that like sounds analog and also we've got resonance on here and there are those who would think that that was you know definitely indicative so then if we go in and we start <laughs> here is a quote analog sounding sound people now associate simple synthesizer sounds like this with analog synthesizers and then they think okay this is an analog synthesizer simply because it has these factors two oscillators beating together you know a filter that is doing a filter arrangement that is old-fashioned and then you know the resonance on there the other thing that can make people think that they're having an analog experience I'm going to go back to our basic is uh, <laughs> pulse width modulation. People think pulse width modulation is like a massively analog sound. So if we were going to have that going on, we would be, let's go in here and find, did I pass the square? Pulse and... Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to go up here and gosh, it's been a while since I used this. Let's take LFO one and put that to oscillator ones shape mod. Now we hear that and it does like remind us of analog synths. But again, keep in mind what we're hearing right now is I don't even have the filter going on all digital. If digital can do it, then what is the distinction between digital and analog? And the answer is the things that analog can typically do are not the things that digitally digital stuff inherently does, which is what draws that distinction. A lot of people want to just let go of the whole analog idea because they think analog is are these things that you know we're we're looking at here, and then they're like, well, yeah, digital could do that. There's no point to analog, and analog doesn't have a characteristic sound. Not true. 
And I'm going to show you why. I think that that myth has arisen simply because, well, I mean, analog sounds too good and digital is capable of sounding less good. So it, it really muddies the waters. But anyway, so this really cool sound. If you were to have that in a song right now, you'd probably go, oh, analog synth. And, you know, honestly, there is an analog filter on here, but still where we're getting the thing that makes us think this is analog is digital pulse width modulation on a digital waveform. So, um, oh, and I mean, the minute we then, let's put it all together. Let's uh, get a sawtooth in there. Get it up there to the final. So we may think that sounds super analog, but I'm going to show you things that sound way more analog than that. The thing to remember is that, and you know, everyone immediately goes for, it's it's indicative in this synth itself. Uh, you've got analog filters. Everyone's like, you don't need anything to sound analog except for analog filters. And everybody knows that to a degree that's true. You put an analog filter on something, it's going to sound a lot better. I mean, it's going to sound more analog. We've got one right here. That's such a great filter. It sounds awesome. You have, you know, this just in general has a great tone. But yeah, the filter will give you what you associate with an analog type sound. But there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of points where you've got this very sterile, hardcore, in tune, unchanging oscillator that's going into a beautiful filter, and it's still not going to sound like a vintage synth if all you're doing is using an analog filter. So that's important to remember. These are simple things that you can sort of make a quote vintage synth sound with. But these are not the characteristics that define analog character. And we're going to go through those individually. Anyhow, but I wanted to give you a start to kind of get you in the ballpark with what we were talking about. So that's what this video has been. But we're going to continue to use the Pro 2 because the Pro 2 has all the tools to make a really awesome analog sound, even though the oscillators are digital.